Alrighty, hello every folks, and good morning. So welcome to a quick discussion on one of the more contentious topics of Tactics Ogre Reborn. Uh, and that's going to be the card system. So this is one that I see a whole lot of takes on. Some folks uh, say that it's an unnecessary change. Some folks that will say that it was uh, uh, that it was something absolutely inspired. Other folks will say it's too random. Other folks will say that they didn't take it far enough. Now, what exactly is the card system? Uh, before, so let's go ahead and dispel some notions before we even get anything going. Do you absolutely need the cards to do anything? No. This is the age-old, uh, I guess you could call it the Pokemon problem, uh, where many folks that will just uh, get into the game for the first time will insist that it's just damage, 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 oh my god, I need to, to get frickin' flamethrower on everything and there's no other answer! And, you know, then as you end up coming back over the years and, you know, discovering more strategies, it's like, wow, you know, friggin' uh, <laughs> Flash is overpowered as hell. <laughs> so, it's one, of the, it's one of those kinds of situations. So, anyway, so yeah, uh, many folks will get uh, stuck on that uh, on that puzzle of just trying to do the damage number and think of absolutely nothing else. Actually, uh, there's a little bit of a funny discussion that came up the other day in terms of, um, like, if uh, if and when uh, we manage to, uh, to make a multiplayer scene happen through some convoluted means that uh, we'll get into later, um, you know, theoretically speaking, obviously the first answer many come up with is summons, but then you think about it, and it's like, well, if you still have access to all the player gear, you could potentially turn those summons into absolutely nothing, just like you could with uh, archers back in PSP. That effectively, the main reason that, uh, that they're so dang good against the AI is, simply put, because they don't get the best gear, and they don't get a lot of the defensive options that you do. So there's potentially a really interesting uh, bit of a, kind of a play between those, of like, technically speaking, you know, you've got the range over here from the casters, but at the same same time, you've got like seven movement on ninjas, potentially shutting them down first, but then what about the hyper armor people? What about the birds potentially going and just evading all that stuff? You know, how many stats are allowed? <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So there, there was a lot of uh, a lot of things to potentially iron out, but let's get back to the cards. Okay, so as far as the cards go, personally, I think that they're an absolutely amazing change. Now, the reason why, for a, a good example, I think we should take a look at something like Age of Empires 2. Now, Take, take something like Age of Empires, and then go ahead and compare it with something like, say, uh, uh, let's, let's say something like, uh, like Civilization, right? So, I would say the standard RPG approach would be something closer to Civilization, where you essentially have your long-term growth that you're going and you're setting up, um, and it feels good. You know, you're setting up your, uh, your, uh, your infrastructure ahead of time, you know what you're building towards, you know, d dozens of hours in advance, and you're going and you're slowly working your way towards that end goal. But then what happens when you achieve? that end goal. You're basically just done, right? So, essentially, then let's go ahead and take a quick peek at uh, what makes something like Age of Empires so damn addictive. Uh, where, from the very start, it's essentially been about taking that same feeling of growth, but then taking it and kind of piecemealing it out between those different games. You still have that feeling of growing, of expanding, of everything else, but then at the same time, you have the, uh, the sort of map randomization aspect. This would sort of be the cards here where there are certain resources that people want to have to expand their builds, but their builds are not entirely in dependent on those cards. They can make other things work. Uh, like, for example, say uh, say you've got uh, somebody like the, uh, I believe it was the Vietnamese that had the trash bows, right? So, in their particular case, like, let's say in one particular type of economy there, they might just uh, focus on a standard, you know, knight build, whatever else. You know, potentially, maybe their uh, their opponent isn't too creative, and so they might just be able to stick with that. In other cases, they might potentially have to suddenly adapt, going for a bunch of trash units uh, like spike. Uh, why am I saying spikes? Uh, like halberds and uh, pikes and stuff, um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to what they were going with with the knights to suddenly counter what was there on the field. In other situations, they might find themselves in, at a massive gold deficit because they ended up losing some stuff early on, but they had just enough to use their market to go then tr uh, go and transition into trash bows. So now suddenly they, you know, potentially have a really good wood line that they can go and use safely while not having to use, uh, use as much of their money. So they've gone and they've shifted into this new thing. And that's basically what the cards are doing here, that they're a resource that's available all over the map, that you have a lot of different builds that can kind of be seen like the sieves in this situation, uh, that can potentially utilize a lot of these different things, but they are not necessarily always dependent on them, and can essentially transform into something else, depending on that situation. So this is why I love things like uh, like Valkyries and the Vartan in this version, where like in uh, back in PSP, it was simply a matter of you stack for your one augment, you stack for your one thing that gets your damage through, and then you play around that. Um, and it was always like you start with the damage and then you work your way around it. In this case, you start with everything else and the damage will come. Um, 
so like let's say uh, with the uh, the Valkyries there, like what's uh, what's their whole situation? Well, let's go take a quick little peek if we don't mind. Uh, let's go ahead and take an interrupt. Uh, where where am I? How have my Valkyrie here? I completely forgot to give her her stuff. Anyway, that's a great start. <laughs> uh, just goes to show when you've uh, been going and trying to get this dang fight done so many times, you just for completely forgets people give people their stuff back anymore. Anyway. So, like, in her particular case, like, let's say she runs into skill cards along the way, then she might be a really solid support, or she might just go for, uh, for just summon spam. If she finds a bunch of physical cards, she might transition over to her finishers. If she finds, uh, let's say a bunch of MP cards, she might not need to use conserve as much, but again, kind of transitions into finisher spam in that particular case. But the idea is that they end up shifting between these different things, or something like the crossbow Terra Knight. Back in PSP, the way that this would work is that you would go for your Og Dark, you would go for your crossbow, and then once those were maxed out, you were basically done. Like, that, that was it. They just have their set function that they do at that time. But now in this case, uh, where we have, again, this kind of flowing, adaptable scenario, we now have a case where, okay, if she ends up uh, picking up some physicals, that combination of her fear debuff as well as this crossbow is absolutely going to kick ass. Um, well, combined with the ogre set. Uh, if you've never tried ogre set plus crossbow, it's wonderful. Honestly, far better than Jiggler set. Anyway, so, uh, so, anyways, uh, let's say she's still got concentration on here to make use of a lot of the debuffs on this uh, ogre armor. So you've got the paralytic, you've got the turper. Is so it going to be uh, just going and getting those for free? I apologize for the random, like, sniffles and pauses. Again, winter's going to winter. It is what it is. Anyway, so, again, she's got concentration to go take advantage of that situation. If she ends up getting blocked off, and because I feel like testing Shadow Break obsessively now, she's got Shadow Break on there. But still, it's just a couple of little things on here that uh, that essentially create a bigger emphasis on adaptability over uh, over just simply going for the damage thing. And this is why I really, really, really hate that notion uh, uh, when I hear folks uh, try to say that this system was simplified, because the interactions between everything, the kind of context behind it all, is so far expanded from before that it's not even funny. And essentially, all of this can mean different stuff depending on your situation simply having more stuff on the list doesn't necessarily always translate to having more depth, it just adds more complexity. Again, depends on how it's handled, though. Back in PSP, the problem was that you could grind past your problems. So, essentially, in this particular case, if a unit were to, let's say, just walk out into Tynemouth Hill and just go pop, pop, pop with this crossbow a few hundred times, get themselves up to, uh, to rank 8, and what happens? Suddenly, the SRPG is not an SRPG anymore, is it? The strategy of that thing is gone. The One of the biggest parts of any SRPG, the kind of golden moment where it shines, is taking all of these standard RPG things, like your debuffs, your different weapon types, your just unusual weapon types of all, all varieties, your set effects, your different movement abilities, the verticality of the map and all of that, and then combines it together in a way that it actually matters, you know? combines it in a way that you actually have to adapt, that you have to MacGyver your way out of different situations. That's the part where it really, really shines, okay? Um, so, like, in this particular instance, uh, essentially, you're taking fewer things into the fight, but they mean more. Um, again, it's kind of, I, I kind of just call it uh, MacGyvering the problem, you can call it whatever you will, but still, the general idea is that you have a set amount of things that you're bringing in with you, and they can do more stuff along the way. You don't need as many things to do as many things, because they have different contexts associated with them. Like the summons back in PSP, why did nobody use these in the last version? Because of the armor system, they had no way to penetrate, so how did they change the armor this time around so that the spells matter more? They changed it so that each of the different damage types essentially functions completely different. Again, something that, uh, that RuneScape did a long time ago. Um, wherein you uh, you have your physical stuff that's really consistent and can scale really well with damage, but they gotta get close. You got your range damage that will vary wildly in terms of how much that damage they can do. Potentially the highest DPS in the game, but they're highly subject uh, to the uh, kind of... Well, I, I always call it the armor system, but like, I guess implied armor system might be a better way to put it. Um, where technically speaking, it's not like officially an armor system, but also it kind of is. <laughs> Uh, anyways, point being, uh, the uh, with all the different numbers flying around, there is kind of an armor system that sort of exists. It's a little bit imaginary, but it also does its job. That 
effectively, that's, uh, I feel like that explains a lot of stuff in this game. Like, technically, it's imaginary, but it is there. <laughs> it's why, for example, again, back in PSP, the uh, the summons o almost always did one damage until suddenly they just insta-killed stuff, uh, whereas this time around they, uh, they changed it to a more consistent thing where they are no longer resisted by vitality, and that was all the difference that they needed uh, to suddenly start, uh, start being really, really handy, right? So, anyways, so... Again, it's this card system combined with the level caps to keep everybody roughly even, on top of the element system, where with the element system, we now have a case where certain units inherently will just have an advantage over others. Again, see your skirmishers versus archers, you know, archers versus knights, you know, uh, you know, pikes versus, uh, versus all, all your cavalry and stuff like that. Again... This is kind of the AOE2 thing, um, where just certain units will inherently have an advantage over others, but instead of being a unit class, it is essentially just their element. And all of those elements are once again interacting with in different ways. In di like right here, he's essentially using part of his air element to go and penetrate past this guy's defenses, allowing him to have a, a, a damage bonus in this situation. Um, whereas against uh, versus many of these knight commanders, as of so far, they would need a debuff in order to go get uh, that stuff through. Um, so again, it's just increasing those, uh, increasing those uh, different, uh, uh, different aspects so that you actually have to think about all this stuff. It's like it feels really, really good once you get used to it. Um, and this is why whenever I see, uh, you know, kind of newer folks uh, going and insisting that there's some simplification or something, like no, the adaptability at play here is far more open than it used to be before. That now, look. Granted, there's going to be other uh, other little details to this as well. So, for example, let's say, uh, you know, th the way that One Vision handled it was, again, another aspect. They did manage to fix a lot of the uh, balance issues that that version had. Uh, uh, that the PSP version had, I should say. Wherein, in, uh, in that version, what had happened was that they changed it so that the game is constantly scaling with you, and that uh, you constantly have to pay attention to your, uh, uh, to your build directly. Uh, they changed it so that the bars can still rank up, but they changed it also that to uh, to a way where essentially you don't have as many bars to rank. So, for example, you can't do the anatomy stack. As soon as somebody figured out the anatomy stack in PSP, like all bets were off. There was no challenge left in the game whatsoever. There was no strategy left. It was just let's just grind our way past our problems. It, it's why so many dumb challenge runs just worked so easily <laughs> when uh, like while we were doing those. It's like, oh, so what's uh, the actual strategy here? Well. We're gonna put on anatomy, and then we're gonna win the game. Like, how do you uh, how do you do a throwing rock only run? Well, you cheese the leveling system uh, to constantly give yourself a level advantage that's basically imaginary, and then you uh, uh, then you go and throw anatomy on there, and congratulations, nothing can touch you anymore. <laughs> like, it's it's hilarious. So, essentially, this combination of the card system, the element system, uh, the way that the debuffs uh, were very uh, very effectively buffed, as well as just units having more tools in their belt uh, from the get-go, led to this really fun scenario here where you're constantly switching up and adapting different things. Like, this whole uh, Ogre Set uh, debuff build uh, that I've got going on with Kashua here. Technically speaking, this existed back in PSP, and technically speaking, it was something that could work, but realistically, for that amount of effort, you might as well just go for the damage. However, in this case, with fear uh, having such a such a massive effect, uh, with the uh, potentially the uh, the amount of scaling that the crossbow well, okay, scaling is a bit of a simple simplification. Just roll with it. Like the amount of uh, potential uh, damage penetration you're getting with that crossbow off of that fear. Um, you know, if you picked up a, cr a crit card, a physical card, potentially you're seeing uh, like a thousand plus off that uh, that basic crossbow all of a sudden. Whereas on the flip side, uh, she's a pretty decent caster and she gets okay damage out of her health steal, which is all well and good. But if you think about it, then uh, if she ends up going and using that health steal in a bit of a different scenario, or like let's say she goes and. Uh, uh, she goes and, uh, let's say, once again, picks up, uh, like, a crit card or something like that, she potentially could steal her entire health bar back, you know? So there's a lot of stuff like that. Or, like, right here, where this chicken's got a uh, elemental advantage over Barbus, he's hit by fear, so suddenly, you know, 800 damage chicken. Like, this system is very dynamic, that's the thing. Say what you will about how satisfying a grind is, this is, again, taking that, uh, the kind of Civ versus AOE argument. Um, of just like, well, instead of that uh, that whole feeling being throughout, uh, you know, one really long journey, and then just kind of being done once you get to the end of it, now it's just fight by fight by fight. This is why I'll often tell folks to not focus on going and grinding up the stats, because it's essentially robbing you of that same experience. Personally, I feel like the charms shouldn't have just been in this game whatsoever, but they're basically cheats. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're basically the candies 
from Let's Go Pikachu. <laughs> that's that's all they are. Um, that they're there for when you go and you hand it over to your uh, your kid or something. It's like here you go, uh, you know, here you go, kiddo. Uh, like I know you're struggling. Let's go ahead and turn that Onyx into a god. Why don't we? So it's okay. I know. Cool Rock Snake is so cool. Um, we'll just um, we'll just go ahead and fix that little problem for you. Yeah. <laughs> or like right here. This is another one of those fun ones that I love to uh, to cover here. Uh, the uh, like the elemental finishers, like right here. She has no physical stats whatsoever. She's been a matriarch from start to finish. But right here, she's uh, essentially doing 500 without uh, without even any benefits, a thousand even, uh, with only uh, with only that crit card there. Because again, elements is uh, bypassing his defenses. Uh, his uh, well, not completely bypassing, but it's getting a bonus that technically goes for the penetration part of the calculation. Good lord, everything gets more complicated. Anyway, um. Anyway, it's getting past his defenses to some degree, which allows her to get more damage out of it. He's hit by fear, his defense is even worse, which means that now suddenly this unit that's primarily a caster is a gigantic threat with a knife. Whereas even if you went and ground up a unit, uh, like a warlock or something like that, you specifically trained him for this one niche application back in PSP, it just wouldn't quite work. It's still working a bit better in, P in uh, one vision. Again, the reason the balance worked in that particular one was because base stats just kind of didn't exist to an extent. Uh, you couldn't really raise them through the traditional means, um, and that little thing is something that uh, that many ended up completely missing. Um, that you are intentionally unable to uh, raise your base stats through any easy means, simply put, because uh, you know it makes the game work. <laughs> so in that case, uh, you do have cases where you know you have casters that can actually make use of their knives and stuff like that. Um, and again, One Vision is its own story. It's effectively taking... If you ever wanted, like, the no-cards version of Reborn, in many ways it does achieve a lot of the same things. And in sometimes a slower and more technical knowledge-needed sort of way, but still, like, if you ever wanted to have the kind of similar experience of having that system balanced out, uh, then yeah, you know, obviously you have uh, uh, you have uh, that version over there. Anyway, anyway, we're, we're getting uh, besides the point again. So what I'm trying to get across here is just, this system is very dynamic. It allows for a lot of fluidity to the fights, and allows a lot of builds to work without any grind being necessary. That's really the, like, the only, uh, the only thing that, uh, that still occasionally, uh, kind of, uh, slows me down on going through, uh, Wind Vision there. Why I prefer to play it on a phone rather than the Steam Deck most of the time. Um, where, it's one of these ones that, uh, you, it kind of can take a little bit of a minute, you know? Um, that there's gonna be those situations where, you know, you're gonna want to, uh, to take a second to go rebuild that build. Like, again, it is a lot faster in that version, I just want to clarify. It is way faster in One Vision, and additionally, typically you only need to get to rank 2 before something is actually viable. So, like, if you were doing a, let's say, throwing weapon kind of build, you absolutely could, uh, could make that function uh, by the time that uh, you got to rank 2 and uh, gave them uh, something like Trajectory to go give them that, uh, essentially that back attack bonus. Uh, you'd see a lot of uh, a lot of solid benefits there. Um, it, it's enough to make it work. If you wanted to use steel, realistically, everything past rank two is basically a luxury. Like again, they they did a solid job as far as making that all work there. But the the kind of uh, idea behind the cards, the elements, and everything else in Reborn is that everything just kind of works out of the box. You can go in with basically no ranks whatsoever. Within a few rounds, you will have the ranks that you need to start doing finishers. Um, actually, that's one of the things I was uh, considering doing at some point, of just like, what happens if you hire completely new rookies before every single fight? And yeah, that would still work in the system, not necessarily because of the cards, but because of the uh, the interaction between the elements, the cards, the, uh, the way that the stats are, I guess, far more just drips in a pool more so than absolutely necessary, you know? Um, Anyway, so hopefully this was a decent explanation as far as uh, what's cool about the card system here, uh, why it is that uh, the ones that uh, find it fun find it really darn fun, um, because yeah, I get it. Look, it's not the standard SRPG approach. Sorry, it's definitely not the standard SRPG approach, but there's a lot of really cool stuff to it, and uh, you know, it's just a really damn fun system to play around with. Uh, makes a lot of those dumb builds uh, that took hours to set up uh, for those dang uh, PvP videos uh, back on PSP, um, and you can just set them up in like a few seconds, so that feels really fantastic to do. Anyway, so I gotta get going. Uh, y'all have y'all selves a good one. I think probably next thing is either gonna be finally redoing that uh, the Kingsbane uh, build video, because, oh, god, I think keeps running into technical issues that I didn't expect for 
absolutely nothing to do with the game reasons. And um, and then also I still need to do uh, the uh, the one vision on know your unit. Uh, that's uh, yeah. for some reason I got it in my head that I wanted to start uh, start that uh, whole thing by just doing a single class challenge with every single class in the game. Um, and then ended up uh, going and constantly swapping between multiple different devices, and <laughs> I got distracted. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, the, uh, the the fact that you could suddenly uh, suddenly uh, do uh, uh, do one vision on the Steam Deck uh, definitely uh, kind of threw that uh, plan to the side a little bit. Um, anyway, anyway. Um, so yeah, a bunch of uh, videos on the way soon. Oh yeah, uh, finisher tier list. That's what was the. Uh, probably one of the next things on the list, because I had that set up the other day. Anyway, I gotta get, get uh, going here. Y'all have yourselves a good one. Uh, I hope you'll consider what I said here if you're one of them stubborn folks that insists that it's the worst thing ever. Again, AOA 2 versus Civ. Like, they're both good. They're just good in different ways. Um, and I guess in this particular context, again, one vision would still be XCOM Long War. It's like you're getting the sort of Civ feeling, but you're also, uh, you're also still making decisions in the field, so to speak. Uh, anyway, uh, I gotta get going. I got stuff to do. So, thank you for stopping by. Later.